Hello, welcome to the Excel Olympics YouTube channel. This is part two of your questions answered series. Now, last September, I did a video on the sequence function, one of my favorite functions from the dynamic array package, from the first dynamic array package that we received. And about two weeks ago, I got a question from Alexander, which was, how do you create, because the sequence function, right? What it does is it creates, shockingly, a sequence. So if I just do, let's say, sequence of 20, right? I get a sequence of 20 numbers. So this is what I get, right? Now, his question was, could I make a sequence of like 20 numbers, but to have the first 10 numbers just like here, and then two blanks, and then 11 to 20 following that? Right, so a single sequence function that will kind of allow me to do a pause in between or something like that. And whereas the question was definitely not, you know, a simple one, so that's why I also decided to do this because I, I think everyone would benefit from it. It was also that when I posted my solution, um, it was, you know, it was just the way I would solve this. Um, but Alexander was thrilled and I thought, well, you know, what, what's so excited about it? And then I, I realized it's so different than, the, than even I would have solved this even a year ago, right? And um, so if I was to solve this a year ago, let's just, or let's say three years ago. <laughs> and so what I would basically do is something like this. I would go equals row, right? And this would be my go-to function, even for IDs in tables or something like that. Um, and it would sort of give me, you know, those regular uh, numbers, but then I could also go, oh, and now if, right? And now I could go, if this row is less than 10, sorry, is less than, or let's just say less than 11, otherwise I would have to go less than or equal to 10, then what I want you to do is I want you to just give me the row, right? But if that is not so, then I want you to check if row, right, is less than 13 right? And those would be my 11 and 12. And if that is true, then I actually want a blank, right? But then if that is not true, so it's not less than 11, it's not less than 13. That means it's less than 20. It will actually be 23 in that point um, or 22. So what I want to do here is say, okay, well, if both of those are not true, then I want you to take the row and I want you to do a minus two. And now, you know, to not get way, um, way off of this, let's just check it what it does, right? So if I go down to here, I get my usual sequence from one to 10. Then I have my pulse of two and that of course could be anything and then I have 11 and so on down here right that is how I would solve it and there's so much you know even first of all this function the row ah, you know it's so space specific right if it was written here, it would give me something totally different and then I would actually need to do row of A1 or something like that. So row, not the best one. And then even taking that into account, I've written row like one, two, three, four times, right? That is way too many times to write the same thing. And, and without me thinking, right? So the way, the way I solved this um, was, and I'm going to do it the long way now, right? So the long way would still kind of be um, if, 
sequence. So now I'm using the sequence function, right? And I'm going sequence of, let's do 22, right? And if that is less than, and let's say if that is less than 11, then just do the sequence of 22, right? But if that is not the case, I want you to check if sequence of 22 <laughs> is less than 13. So it's kind of the same, you know, the same thing we did before, right? Just with a different function. And if that is true, I want it to be blank. And then if that is not true, I want you to do a sequence of 22 minus two. Now, I'm gonna close this down, right? And let's see what happens, right? So we get kind of exactly what we were looking for. So the sequence goes to 22, but you don't see the 22, you actually see the 20 because it's a minus two at that point, right? So it goes down to here just as a sequence function, then because it's between 11 and 13, so it's in here, you get the blank, and then onwards, you get the minus two, okay? So even this, right, a single function just does it, right? And then you could, you know, sort of make this dynamic, sort of make this dynamic, the, the pause in between, right? It would be equal to this, but it will also, this would then be equal to the first, let's say the beginning of the pause plus, you know, dx. So this could be created or actually made dynamic in many ways. But the, the first part here is I use the sequence function. But then you go and you say, oh, and then you wrote if, if, right, there's two ifs. And what if I wanted another one? It would be three ifs and so on. And so let's make it better. Now, the first thing, you know, I actually did here is I used something that was kind of a, how do I say this? It's a helper, so I don't need to write sequence several times, right? Because it's the same thing. So what you do is you use your DAX memory and you go for the let function, right? And the let function was very simple here. It was just, okay, so let, and I'll call it my name, right? So let my name define sequence of 22, right? That is what I'm calling my name. Right, and from here on out, I don't need to write sequence 22. I just do my name, my name, my name, right? And then comes the calculation, right? And instead of me doing if, 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 as many times as I need it, I'll just do ifs, right? And the ifs will say, okay, so ifs, the sequence, and now it's more or less a test and what if it's true, a test and what if it's true, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, I want you to take my name, right? And figure out if my name is less than 11, right? I didn't need to write a sequence. And then if that is true, I want you to give me my name. If that is not true, I want you to check if my name is less than 13, right? And now if that is true, then I want you to give me a blank. And then I want you to check if my name, and then I think I went for something like, if my name is less than 23, I guess, then here's what I want you to do. Just give me my name minus two. 
right? And the beauty of this, the real beauty of this is it's a single function. It doesn't have three ifs, right? Or two ifs, it just have one ifs, which sounds strange, but that's the way it is. And with the let function in the beginning, I'm able to just write the sequence once and then reuse it as many times as I want to, right? So when, when I publish this as a comment or as a solution or whatever, I, I, I wasn't even thinking, but this is such a modern way of using Excel, right? It's using the let, it's using the ifs function, and it really does help. It really does make it shorter, it makes it easier to read, it makes it better. Right? And even if with this, I was now going for the, you know, making it some sort of a random thing, I could easily go with one, two, three parameters, right? This would be the one that I would put into sequence. This would be the first kind of limitation. And then this one would actually be a calculation of this plus the number of blanks. And I really think without me, you know, thinking at the time um, that I love this solution. I love it how modern, how modern it is. And I love it how modern Excel has become, right? How we can write things so clearly, so, and much easier these days. Um, so anyways, these are your questions answered. Alexander, thank you for your question and uh, keep the questions coming. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.